Good afternoon, YouTube. I pray that you guys had a wonderful holidays and a wonderful new year. I'm back again today with another heat pump video. This one is just some information I think that you guys may find useful. And I wanted to share it with you and make a quick video about how to diagnose some of these things. And I'll probably have two more videos, this one and another one, then we'll probably end the uh, heat pump series. Because again, I'm not, I'm not a professional. I did install them for years and uh, I do know some things about them. So what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about defroster boards and how that affects your heat pump and uh, maybe a few diagnos uh, diagnosing tips as well. Uh, first of all, we'll get this uh, panel off of this heat pump of mine here. Uh, we'll get this panel off and we'll, get, we'll look at the uh, um, defroster board and I'll tell you a few things about it and what to kind of look for. And every heat pump, diagnosing the uh, defroster board for every heat pump is going to be different. So you'll have to look up your manufacturer and uh, see what, you know, what kind of specs it has and how to diagnose it. But let's get this turned around. I'll get started on this video and we'll get, we'll get this and I'll show you how to do these things. Okay, so normally what you're going to have is a couple of screws here, down here, and around the corner here to take these up, to take this off. And that panel will just come right off and you'll see your, you'll see your defroster board behind that. Okay, so I'm going to do that right quick and I'll show you. Okay, I got the panel off here, and I'm going to show you this too. So this is my defroster board here. This is how everything looks. And I'll, I'll go over with you here in a minute where all the components are. But the only thing we're going to mainly look at today is that green board down there, the defroster board. And then we'll talk about the other components in another video. But I'm going to give you some uh, warnings about these as well. Remember, like I told you, if you've not watched my other heat pump videos, go back and watch them. Um, they have some good information. It will tell you how to read this diagram here on your panel. And what to look for on this panel to help you diagnose your heat pump. So basically what happens is when this heat pump, when the defroster board, like say you go in there, no, before we get started, let me back up. Let's always remember to take this out. Remember what I showed in other videos, if the word says on and you can read it, that means there's power. See how off is upside down? If you put it in like that, there's power to the heat pump. So always pull that and turn it back around and put it where the word off is read, readable and it's up. And it also says off or no. And if it looks like that, that's good to put it back in. And you can lay it up top, like I said in another video, watch that video and get more information about that. But I would prefer you do like that, turn it upside, upside down where the word off is correct. Okay, so give me just a second here and I'll be back with you. Okay guys, sorry for the delay there. I actually had to pause the video Go inside and get me a heavy coat and some gloves. The temperature has dropped here today. Ridiculous. I know that we're supposed to get an Arctic blast. Anyway, so always remember to take care of the power situation. Please do that. As I always say in all my videos, if you don't feel comfortable fooling this, please don't get a professional. But if you feel like you may be able to do it and you know got a little bit of background and you're and, and you know you follow these videos. Uh, there's more videos on YouTube, a lot of them more, it's better than mine. So, if you would, just watch those, and if you feel comfortable, then go ahead. But always remember, main thing, first thing, always turn that power off. Okay, now, so we're looking at the defrost board. I'm going to explain to you a quick, a quick rundown of how this works. It's pretty, uh, not too bad. So, when you heat pump inside, when you turn the thermostat on, let's say it's, uh, let's say it's like right now, it's the winter time. You turn your heat pump on to heat. You've got a certain, certain temperature that you have set. Well, what happens is that thermostat will send a signal out here through these wires, these thermostat wires. If you remember on the other video, we went over these. They're, di they're labeled here on the board, and they're labeled over here on this diagram, and they also labeled inside the, inside the house in your thermostat. They will send a signal to this board. It's usually somewhere, somewhere around 24 volts. So to diagnose, a, if you let's say you turn your heat pump on, on heat, and you, your heat pump kicks on, but your, wet, your air inside is not getting warm. The vents are blowing out just cool air. You, and you, you hear the motor inside, and there's, there's air coming out your vents. Next thing to check is walk out to wherever this outdoor unit is and see if this fan's running, if it's blowing. If it's not running or blowing, chances are you got a problem out here. And could be the defroster board. That's the primary. That's a primary signal and sign. If that was not blowing, you may have 
there's several issues, but the defroster board can be one of them. So to check to see if it's a defroster board, first thing you want to do, like I said, check, get a voltmeter. Remember I showed you a simple voltmeter I got. You can take and put it on volts, DC, and uh, remember, direct current, DC. And you want to check these and see if there's a signal coming here for 24 volts, all right? And it should send the signal over. If there's not 24 volts on these wires, you have to look at your own schematic for your own heat pump. But it'll send 24 volts to this heat pump, to this defroster board. And it tells that defroster board, okay, go into heat mode. And then it'll go into heat mode. Remember this indicator that I told you? H1. This is a different heat pump than the other one. And yet it has H12. And if you remember what that stands for on your diagram over there on your panel, that stands for heat cycle 1. So that's going to tell us that this heat pump is in heat cycle 1. Now, if all that is correct, it's your default froster board more than likely is okay. It's probably another situation. Also, the defroster board, just like it's the work it got it name, its name from, is simply one thing. So when these heat pumps, you got these coils in here. Let's see if I can get you say, I see those coils inside there, look like a radiator down in there. So those coils, when they've got air, they collect moisture. So if you're moving a hot air out of the house that's what a heat pump does it moves hot air out of the house or it moves cool air out of the house one of the two depending on which you have it set to and doing that as you know from anything it will cause condensation on this on these radiator fans down here right and that condensation in cold weather like today will freeze up and if that freezes up then you can't move no air through there and if you can't move the air through those pins then your heat pump's not going to work correctly. It's going to frost over, freeze over, and then you're, you're going to get nowhere. So the first thing to check is the fan blowing. Second thing to check, if you see frost. If you can't see good like mine here, it's kind of hard to see. Come out here and look inside here. But you normally can see it from the outside through here. You'll see white frost look kind of like, like back in those vents right here. See you back in there? And if you can see frost, then you, you might be a defroster board. Or as we remember from my first video about heat pumps, it could be a high pressure switch, okay? But remember the symptoms. Fan's not blowing out here. Defrosted here. You're not getting 24 volts here. Your board is in heat one mode, or if it's summertime, it should be C1. If it's not in that, and all that stuff is accurate, then it's probably your defroster board, okay? Simply get online. Now, now if you go through a, well, I'm going to tell you right now, if you go through a AC guy and they're going to get mad at me for this, they're probably going to comment about it. I'm sorry. I'm here to help the guys who can't afford it. If you can afford to pay a, a heat pump guy, that's great because they do go to school. They've got a lot of training and they know what they're talking about. I'm not going to say they're all honest because in my experience, it's like anything else. Some of them are honest. Some of them are not. But I can tell you right now, that board from any heat pump guy installed is going to cost you on $800. How I know is, that's what they want to charge me for mine, and it wasn't even the problem. The, the reverse valve was the problem. And I showed you how to do that last video. So, get online. Amazon even has them. Check, get your brand. Look at the uh, model number. It's on your defroster board. Order that thing up. Replace it. Now, what you want to do when you go to replace this thing, this defroster board, is you will want to take a picture of everything with your phone. Picture over here. Picture over here, picture of these wires up here, picture down here, picture of everything. If you need to even label them with a, uh, put you some tape around and label them, that's fine too. Just make sure you label them. Then put the new one in, plug everything in. But before you do that, something you must remember. This thing right here is called a capacitor. See this? Now the capacitor We'll go into more detail, details about it later and how they work and what it's for. But this capacitor is simply a thing. Imagine it, it's a bucket. It stores energy. So let's say it's like a water bucket. You know, if there's one drop of water in there, you splash it on you, it's not going to hurt you. You're not going to get wet from that. But if a, if a gallon bucket is full of water and you splash it on you, it's going to get you soaking wet, right? This is the same way. If it has a little bit of energy in it, it's not going to hurt you. But if it's stored full of energy, and you touch that, it could potentially hurt you pretty badly. Okay, so how do we get past that? A couple ways. One, you can make it run, run these wires down, and any wire that comes off the capacitor that may be plugged 
plugged into anything to the board, make sure you pull those off and don't touch those terminals. Don't touch them to anything. Some people say take a screwdriver and short those out. I won't. I don't recommend that because I think that's dangerous and it's and it's kind of irresponsible. I wouldn't do that. Just make sure when you plug those. If you have to plug these wires off, and that goes for all these wires, really, to be honest with you. Even though you don't have power here, that capacitor stores power like a battery, like I told you, like a water bucket full, and it uses it to kickstart that compressor. So we don't want to touch anything coming off of that. So best way to do is get you some insulated pliers. Pull those leads off and don't let them touch anything. Hang them to the side. Put your board in, plug everything back in, right? Turn your power back on. That should fix it. Now, there's some, there's a couple other issues that could be wrong with the, with the heat pump. A couple of those we've already discussed. Reversing valve is one issue. That's in the previous video. High pressure switch is another problem that could be wrong. That's in another video as well of mine. So I encourage you to go back and watch those videos if you're having a heat pump problem. And seeing, seeing if any of those fit your, fit your bill yet, okay? Now, there's a couple other things that cause that. If your heat pump is low on Freon, you know, you're not going to get any heat or cool out of it. If that's the case, you'll have to call someone to have them put Freon in it. You won't be able to do that yourself. There's just no way around that. You're just going to have to have it done. Uh, but to diagnose this board, if you're getting 24 volts right here from your thermostat, because it's sending the, the thermostat's what sends the signal out here to tell this defroster board what to do. If it's not getting 24 volts out here, okay, that means there's a problem between here and the thermostat. If you are getting 24 volts out here from the thermostat, that probably means your defroster board is more likely bad, especially if it's not entered heat, heat one cycle, right? Or heat or cool too, whichever it be, summer or winter, whatever. If it's not getting that and it's don't have that voltage over here, more than likely that's what the problem is. Now later on, we this is a relay here. Uh, we'll we'll go over that later in another video and the condenser in another video. Don't worry about those for now. Those cause their own problems, and we'll discuss those later. I just want to let you know that you can change that defroster board by yourself if you can diagnose it. So what to do, get online and say your pump, heat pumps is a, a train or a Goodman, whatever it may be, look up your, look up your, go on YouTube, look up your brand, and there, there'll be plenty of videos that tell you exactly how to diagnose, because they're all a little bit different, okay? Uh, the symptoms are quite similar, like I told you some of the symptoms from a bad defroster board already. Uh, so you will get online and you will... Get on there and do research your heat pump and how to diagnose a bad defroster board. That's what this green thing is. If you don't have this fan running, but the inside unit is running, or you have frost built up in here, those two things could be a defroster board. Also, could be some other things. Some, like I said, some we've already covered. If you know your high pressure switch is good, then how do we check that? Check the other video out, but it consists of these two yellow wires right here. It's simple check with a meter. Watch my other video to learn how to do that. If your high pressure switch is good and it's still defrosting, gotten, it's gotten, I mean, still frosting over, it's got uh, ice build up here, then it probably is this board right here. Or it could be the reversing valve, which we've also talked about in another video. And there's a couple other issues too, uh, but that is just i just want to go over with you how to diagnose that defroster board how to get it changed out and remember if you buy this thing you don't have to do anything with it other than take the old one out put the new one in and plug all the wires back in you don't got to unscrew these you just got to unplug them right over here see these terminals and then over here see those terminals and then down here see those terminals and remember what i told you take a very good picture and if you even even label them if you need to label them with a piece of masking tape and writing something on them, whatever makes sense to you, that's perfectly okay to do that. See, this defroster, if you see this right here, see this little thing right here? That is an outdoor temperature monitor, or a little temperature sensor. That tells this defroster board what to do in terms of, hey, it's uh, above 32 degrees. I don't got to worry about defrosting this, this, uh, these coils. Hey, this... 19 degrees. I got a member to defrost this, this terminal, this uh, um, radiator in here. That's what that does. It, that's all that temperature sensor does. It tells that board when to kick on and defrost those coils as versus when not to kick on and defrost those coils. Okay, that's all it's for. 
and that's and that's another video too. Sometimes those ones go bad, but I rarely see those go bad, hardly ever. I'm not saying they don't, they do, but this very, very rare, okay? And uh, I hope that clears it up for you. Um, and, and if you have any questions, as always, don't hesitate to leave comments. I'll try my best to respond to all comments and questions. Again, I'm not a heat pump professional. There's guys out there way better than me, no more way, way more than I do. But I'm just trying to show you the information I know. I'm trying to save you guys a buck along the way. Those boards use anywhere from 100 bucks to $140. You put it in yourself, you're done. Versus paying eight to nine hundred dollars to have a pro to come out and do it for you. That's a that's a seven hundred dollars saving. To me, that's a big you know. And it the way our economy is right now, if I can save seven hundred dollars and I can pretty comfortably know what I'm doing, I'm going to do it. If I'm uncomfortable and it scares me to touch anything electrical, then don't do it. If you don't have confidence, that could be your worst enemy. You can get in here and get hurt. So don't fool with it. If you're not comfortable, please don't fool with it. For, and then foremost and first of all, always, always, always disconnect that power, okay? I hope you have a God-blessed day. I hope this has helped you. Please, if you would, less than 1% of the people who watch my videos are subscribing. A lot of them are getting good information from it, but nobody's hard subscribing to my channel. I don't, I'm not saying you have to stay subscribed, but if you're subscribed to help me out, helps grow my channel. I would really like to do more with this channel. I would really like to help everyone out including myself i'm not going to sit here and, and play games with you uh you know growing this channel helps me but this channel growing this channel helps me also helps me to help you guys i want to put more videos out i want to do more more uh diy stuff i want to do all kinds of things that helps my fellow man to save you money to save me money okay so if you would comment ask you questions leave a like a thumbs up would be great and subscribe would be awesome. I hope you guys have a blessed day, and I pray that this has helped you in some fashion or form to help you diagnose what's going on with your heat pump. And uh, I'll see you on the next one, okay? Thank you for watching.